वेलकम आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस लेक्चर इन द कोर्स संधि इन पाणिनियन ग्रामर इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी लुक्ड एट वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ अच संधिज वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड द प्रोसेस ऑफ स्पीच प्रोडक्शन the concept of samhita which is the background for sandhi to take place we also studied an important concept called vivaksha earlier which plays a very crucial role as far as sandhi is concerned then we moved towards studying ach sandhi namely vowel sandhi and within that we said that there are two types the first one is ekasthanik ekadesha where you have one substituent in which place in whose place one substitute is stated by the sutra in the ashtadhyayi and we said that there are two sutras and two types of sandhis which come under this one bigger type ekasthanika ekadesha the first one amongst them is yan sandhi and the second one is ayavayava sandhi and we are dealing with the first one namely the yan sandhi so this is the diagrammatic representation of this ekasthanika ekadesha type of achandhi this is stated in between 6172 to 6183 so we have a plus b and a is substituted by c b remains as it is so eventually the a plus b is the input and c plus b is the output a is the substituent c is the substitute this is the sthani this is the adesh ek sthani ek adesh and we said that yan sandhi is the first type of such a ek sthanik ek adesh sandhi and we shall study this type of sandhi in a few lectures this is the first lecture on yan sandhi here in this lecture we shall study some basic facts about yan sandhi the sutra and its meaning and the overall data set that is covered in the sutra and then we shall study some other important features which are stated at the end of this lecture so let us look at eko yanachi the sutra 6177 which prescribes in a way which describes in a way the yan sandhi we have already noted that ikaha is 61 of ik and it means in place of ik yan is 11 one of yan achi is 71 one of ach which means immediately before ach and ach is a vowel there is also the word samhitayam which continues in this sutra from 6172 samhitayam is 7 slash 1 of samhita which means in the domain of samhita that means in the samhita mode of utterance what is samhita extreme proximity or close proximity of sounds and we have also studied what this close or extreme proximity is absence of additional gap and provision of only that gap which is 
required for the distinct comprehension of two sounds in proximity. So when ik and ach are in close proximity, this is the meaning of the sutra, when ik and ach are in close proximity as per the desire of the speaker, yan is the substitute that comes in place of ik. So we have this particular meaning stated in Sanskrit, ikaha sthane yan adeshaha bhavati achipare samhitayam. To rearrange it, we can say that samhitayam ach avyavahita purvasya ach avyavahita purvasya ikaha sthane yan adeshaha bhavati. What it means is that in the samhita mode, in place of ik, which comes immediately before ach, place the substitute yan. I repeat, in the samhita mode, in place of ik, which comes immediately before ach, place the substitute yan. So this meaning can be put in the form of equation in this manner. Input is ik plus ach. The plus sign indicates the close proximity or the samhita and here ach is immediately coming after ik. To put it in other way, ik comes immediately before ach and so by the application of 6177, ik gets substituted by yan and so we have the output of 6177 yan plus ach. Input of 6177 is ik plus ach, output is yan plus ach. So the meaning that this equation represents is the following. In the samhita mode, in place of ik, which comes immediately before ach, and ach stands for any vowel, place the substitute yan. That is what this equation does. The next question we asked and we are asking now again is what is ik, what is yan and what is ach? And we said that these are three pratyaharas representing three different set of sounds. And these different sets of sounds participate in this particular operation stated by 6177 in different capacities. What are those capacities? Ik is acting as the sthanin or kargin. Ik is the substituent. Ik is getting substituted. Ach is the nimitta or the condition or the environment. And yan is the substitute. Yan is the adesha. So, ik, ach and yan are performing these three different duties in this particular sutra. What is ik, what is yan and what is ach can be answered in this particular way as well. So, here you have a and ch marked in red, e and k marked in blue, y and n marked in maroon color. So this indicates how these pratyaharas get formed. So starting from a up to this ch, all elements that come in between except of course the markers n, k, ng and this ch also, all of them they are termed ach and also this a. So a and ch makes the term ach which stands for all vowels. E and k when they are joined together you get the pratyahara ik and this includes e, u, ru and lu omitting this 
and uh, of course so ik is e u ru lu and yan is from this year up to this na so ya wa ra and l so this is how ach ik and yan with the pratyaharas they get formed so this is stated once again on this slide so we can ask the question what does ik what does yan and what does ach stand for based on the data that we have seen in the previous slide in the form of the pratyahara sutras and we can answer these questions in the following manner ik stands for e u ru and lu stated in sutras 1 and 2 ach stands for a e u ru lu a o i and au stated in sutras 1 to 4 and yan stands for ya wa ra la as stated in the pratyahara sutras but actually this these as they don't uh, count so yan actually stands for consonants ya consonant wa consonant ra and consonant la we have already stated that in the pratyaharas covering the consonants the vowels are uttered only for the sake of distinct comprehension otherwise they don't become part of that particular pratyahara so yan stands for consonants ya wa ra and la and these are stated in sutras 5 and 6 so if we rewrite the meaning of 6177 using this expanded information we can say that in the meaning is the following in the samhita mode in place of ik that is e u ru and lu which comes immediately before ach that is any vowel that is one of the vowels in the list a e u ru lu a o i and au place the substitute yan ya wa ra la meaning consonant ya consonant wa consonant ra and consonant la i repeat in the samhita mode in place of ik that is e u ru and lu which comes immediately before ach so any one of them can come before any one of these ach a e u ru lu a o i and au then in place of this ik place the substitute yan one of these four ya wa ra and la this is the meaning of 6177 in written in an expanded manner the same meaning can be put in the form of an equation on this slide here we have input in the form of e u ru lu one of them plus a e u ru lu a o i and au any one of them and the output would be ya wa ra la and a e u ru lu a o i and au so eventually e u ru lu they get substituted by ya wa ra and la we observe that there is a principle of correspondence which plays an important role which is also stated in the ashtadhyayi of panini and this particular principle is referred to as yatha sankhya nyaya by the sutra yatha sankhyam anudesha samanam this principle is stated the sutra is 1.3.10 what it says is that relation of same numbered elements is correspondence in this case sthani and adesha in this sutra there are four sthanis which are stated and there are four adeshas which are stated four substituents sthani and four substitutes adeshas so if we place the sthanis in this order 1 2 3 4 and adesha in this order once again 1 2 3 4 then the first of the sthanis corresponds with the first of the adeshas second in the sthani corresponds with the second 
in the list of adesha elements third in the list of sthani elements corresponds with the third in the list of adesha elements and fourth in the list of sthani elements corresponds with the fourth in the list of adesha elements in this case you have e u ru and lu as sthanis and ya va ra la stated as adeshas so e is the sthani corresponding with ya as the substitute and remember these letters are stated here as they were stated in the 14 sutras as we already saw these stand for just the consonants ya va ra and la as was stated earlier as well now these elements are written in different colors to indicate which element is corresponded with which other element so e is the sthani in whose place y is the substitute u is the sthani in its place v is the substitute ru is the sthani and in its place comes r as the substitute lu is the substitute n or sthani and in its place comes l as the substitute if we show the further expanded meaning of this sutra taking individual instances we can show the meaning of the sutra in the form of equation in this particular manner on this slide we show having taken e as the sthani how the meaning can be written so we can have e plus a as the as the given condition e plus a in which there is some hita and we see that e comes immediately before a vowel ach that is a in this case and so 6177 applies and we get y plus a so e gets substituted by y when a follows similarly if you have e followed by u e will be substituted by y and the output would be y followed by u similarly if you have e followed by ru as the input as we have e as the substitute end, and the output would be y followed by ru so y substitutes e then we have e plus lu e followed by lu and we have the output in the form of y followed by lu then we have e followed by a and the output would be y followed by a then we have e followed by o and the output would be y followed by o similarly we have input in the form of e followed by i and the output would be y followed by i then we have finally e followed by o and the output would be y followed by o the plus sign in all these individual instances indicates that there is samhita between these two elements samhita is there in input and also in the output what we have noticed is that something is missing so if we look at this we notice that we have e followed by a and then in this list of environments after a we immediately go to u there is no e that comes in between a and u mentioned anywhere here why because this is not possible by this sutra so if we have e followed by e the output is not y followed by e this is not possible and that is the reason why this is put in a different totally different color this is not possible because there is some other sutra that comes into play and that says that when e in the samhita mode is followed by e which is savarna then in place of both of them place the dirgha and so the output of this input would be long e 
and not this here followed by E. Theoretically, this output is generated by this sutra, but this is covered by the domain of Akasavarane Dirghaha, which we shall study later on. In this way, in the overlapping domain of Ikoyanachi, Akasavarane Dirghaha plays a crucial role and says that in this particular environment, E followed by E, Ikoyanachi does not apply and rather Akasavarane Dirghaha applies. Now, if we look at the expanded meaning with U as the sthani, these are the individual instances that we can show. So, we have input in the form of U plus A and they are in the Samhita mode, that is what this plus sign indicates, where A is the right hand side environment, immediately before which comes U and then the output is V plus A, V followed by A. If you have U followed by E, U plus E, output is V plus E. Then you have U plus Ru, U followed by Ru and the output is V plus Ru, V followed by Ru. Then you have U plus Lu and the output is V plus Lu. Then you have U plus A as input and the output after the application of 6177 is V plus A. Then you have U plus O as input and the output is V plus O, V followed by O. Then you have U followed by I and the output is V followed by I, V plus I. Then you have U followed by O and the output is V followed by O. Once again, if you notice in this sequence of environments, right hand side environments, after E should come U, but then that is missing, we go directly to Ru and the reason is once again like before. So this is not possible. If you have input in the form of U plus U, Theoretically, this sutra 6177 would generate the output in the form of O plus U, but the sutra Akasavarane Dirghaha once again comes, comes into play and says that the output of this should be one long U. That is the second type of Sandhi that we have seen before. So this is not possible, U plus U then cannot generate the output V plus U because of the interrelation of this rule with the other rule Akasavarne Dirghaha. Now if we look at the expanded meaning of the sutra with individual instances where Ru as a vowel is the sthani and these are those cases. So if we have Ru plus A as input where Ru and A are in the Samhita mode indicated by this plus sign. A is the right hand side environment which is immediately preceded by Ru and then you apply 6177 and then you get the output R followed by A. So R is the substitute in place of Ru. Then you have Ru plus E, Ru followed by E and the output is R followed by E, R plus E. Then you have Ru plus U, Ru followed by U and the output is R followed by U, R plus U. Then you have Ru plus Lu and the output is R plus Lu. Then you have the input Ru plus A and the output after the application of 6177 is R plus A, R followed by A. Then you have the input in the form of Ru plus O and the output 
after the application of 6177 is R plus O. Then if you have the input in the form of RU plus I, the output is R plus I. And finally, RU plus O is the input and after the application of 6177, the output is R plus O. Once again, we notice that in this list of right hand side environments, after a e u, there is the place of ru, but that is missing. We will go directly to lu, and the reason is the same as before. So, in this case, if the input is ru plus ru, the output should be theoretically ru plus ru by the application of 6177. But once again, we have the Sutra Akasavarane Dirghaha coming into play and states that in place of both of them, we will place the long variety of this Ru. And so this output is not allowed by the interrelation of rules, namely the interrelation between Iko Yanachi 6177 and Akasavarane Dirghaha, which we shall study subsequently in this particular course. Now, if we write the expanded meaning of these, this sutra with the individual instances as the highlight, with the sthani in the form of the vowel lu, we can write all those cases in the following manner. One note about the vowel lu. This vowel was uttered by the native speakers of Sanskrit until a given point in time. After that, this was lost. But the Sanskrit grammatical tradition has still retained this particular vowel in its inventory. And so we do not have too many examples with this vowel lu. However, with whatever little data that we have, we can clearly formulate some examples. So if we have lu followed by a, when they are in the samhita mode indicated by this plus sign, where a is the right hand side environment immediately preceded by the vowel lu, by the application of 6177, the output would be l followed by a, that is l plus a. Then we have lu plus e and the output is l plus e. Then we have lu plus u as input and the output is l plus u. Then if we have lu plus ru as input, the output would be l plus ru. Then we have lu plus a as input and the output is l plus a. By the application of 6177. Then we have input in the form of lu plus o and the output is l plus o. Similarly, if we have input in the form of lu plus i, the output is l plus i. And finally, we have the input lu plus o by the application of 6177, the output is l plus o. Once again, if we notice the right hand side environments have a sequence a, e, u, ru and then we expect lu over here which is missing and the reason is the same as before. If we have the input in the form of lu plus lu, the output that is theoretically generated by 6177 is l plus lu, but this is the domain of application of akas savarane dirghaha and so in this case Ikoyanachi does not apply. So this output is not possible, this is not allowed. Rather in place of both of them, the one substitute that comes is the long ru. How we shall study when we study the Sutra Akas Savarne Dirghaha. After having studied all these individual instances and we shall study the examples of each of these cases 
possibly. After having studied them, we note the important feature of Yan Sandhi. That important feature is that Yan Sandhi is always conditioned by the right hand side environment. And therefore, it is called Paranimittaka in the Paninian grammatical tradition. It is a substitute in place of a vowel. So, it is called Ajadesha, Ach Adesha, Achaha Sthane Adeshaha. And these are the two terms used in the Paninian grammatical tradition. Paradimittakaha Ajadeshaha. And on this basis, as we shall study later on, the concept of Sthani Vadbhava can be explained. To summarize, we studied how the terms yan, ik and ach get formed using the pratyahara technique and what all sounds are part of these pratyaharas which undergo this operation. Then we also studied in detail taking individual cases of sthanis and environments and studied what would be the substitutes in those environments. We studied the meaning of the Sutra 6177 which describes the Yan Sandhi in this particular detailed manner. We also presented the meaning in the form of an equation and then we expanded the meaning with individual cases being highlighted. Now we study the examples which illustrate these cases. Further, what we study next? We also study the Uddeshya Vidheya Bhava, which is part of the explanation of 6177. And after we use this Uddeshya Vidheya Bhava in this explanation, the place of articulation as criterion for selection of the substitute becomes very important. Then we also discuss the examples of Yan Sandhi at all levels. Pada level, and Vakya level and in Samhita and at various levels discussed earlier. Then we also study examples of Yan Sandhi with individual cases being the highlight. And in this process we also study the interrelation of rules. Then we also will study this particular question. Can the substitute be considered same as the substituent? Namely, can there be sthanivad bhava in this case? The next question would be how? How can we consider this? Most important question would be by application of which sutra? There are two sutras at least which talk about such a sthanivad bhava which amongst them would be applied over here. And are there some exceptions? Then we shall study how Yan Sandhi acts as an input to the Swara Sutras, accent rules. And finally, are there any gaps in the description of Yan Sandhi in the grammar composed by Panini and has the later Paninian grammatical tradition tried to fill into those gaps? by providing additional statements. This we shall study next in the coming lectures. Thank you for your attention.